my goodness. Oh, what a nice, uh, beautiful day. And wow, we have a good attendance today. I think everyone's feeling like, get out, enjoy some fresh air and enjoy the fellowship of beautiful people and that's what i'm seeing here today so delighted to see everyone thank you and we have some special guests with us today uh gonna have a special honorary presentation and also uh, a speaker that's going to help us to feel good about how urban care makes a difference and also involvement with community so Hang on, we have a beautiful agenda and I'm believing everyone will feel good about attending. To kick us off, we're going to have prayer with Dr. Labar. Yesterday was the first official day of autumn. And doesn't it feel like it today? Yeah. yeah. Would you go to, to prayer with me? Eternal God, we give you thanks for the blessings of this day, for the beautiful, beautiful weather outside, for the change of the season as we march down towards the end of the year and the celebrations that uh, are before us. We ask your spirit to be upon us, upon our club, the work we do in the community, upon our guest this day as we honor him for his service to our community. We ask your spirit to bless this food, to take it to the nourishment of our bodies, and then to keep us this day in your peace. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. And at this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Please place your hand over your heart and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we will have our entertainment team lead us with God Bless America, the best. <laughs> Yes, Sandra, thank you. <laughs> okay, we always try to highlight a guest member to help everyone to get to know all the awesome members and network together. And so today, our Director of Community Service, Mr. Richard Raymond, will come forth and tell us why he is a Rotarian. And anything he'd like to brag about. Well, uh, basically, I'm Jordan Rotary because I think it's the best organization that we have for el for elderly people, I guess. And uh, we, <laughs> well, that's what's here anymore. And uh, we give a lot of scholarships and help everybody in the community which uh, is kind of a continuation of like the Boy Scouts was when I was in Boy Scouts. And I was an Eagle Scout and I worked through all the projects and helped all the, you know, the city government and everything when we could. And so this is just a continuation. Uh, I really wanna go back to some old school. I know our membership is kind of dwindling a little, 
and I think we should go back to some old school stuff where we might have a booth like a maybe with the fish fry or something downtown or when they have a the old car show or something we can have a booth there uh, we need to get our name out more into the community because uh all we do is give money away to all these great organizations scholarships and the other thing i think that we do give money away to the kids in the irving for the scholarships and i think uh, maybe we can get their parents involved and join their rotary especially they could do it online sunrise club or join our club uh, it doesn't take much. You don't have to come to our, our meetings in person, but I, I think we really need to get our name out. And then the other thing I'd like to do is maybe go into North Lake College and everything into the adult education and get some of those people involved in it too. So uh, we do have a huge uh, obligation and uh, I think we can all get more and more people involved in the Irving and the more money, people we get involved, the more we can help the community. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> well, at this time, I think we have an introduction of some guests, and then the director of membership has a couple of guests attending that would like to become members. Tracy? <laughs> And Haro, do you have something you'd like to? Yeah, real quick, uh, welcome uh, new prospective members and also everybody that is here. Uh, Chief Spivey, thank you for being here. Uh, Councilman, uh, thank you for being here as well. And as Richard was mentioning, yes, we need to uh, get more exposure for the Irving Rotary, Rotary, Irving Las Vegas Rotary Club and all the great things that you guys know here that we do. Uh, and I agree with Richard, uh, we, those are some of the initiatives that we're working on to be able to do uh, things at other events so that we can give some recognitions. But in the meantime, I think us as members here can do our part as well. Uh, we know what it means to be a Rotarian and why we do it. And again, uh, we have a lot of the tools here available and a lot of people that have similar characteristics like us. So I have uh, given and passed it out to some of the members a uh, how to propose a new member. We all sometimes need a little refresher uh, so everybody should have one of these on their desk that is a member so you can read it uh, and also there's a sheet so write down your best person that you know now who would you like to come here to the rotary club and then again if we all just bring one this year we double it's that simple uh, so let's see what we can do every day let's invite a new member to come to the rotary and share the good things that we're doing here and i'm always around too if you guys have any questions uh, it's a lot easier for members now because they can join us through Zoom uh, or also make up through the YouTube videos that we do. So a lot of the having to be here in person, it's out of the question now. So there's a lot of opportunities to give a lot of people that can can, can join the meetings now. So thank you, uh, Mr. Pres Ms. President. And uh, I'm always around if you guys, you guys have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. As well as a tremendous director of membership. He has been very involved with all of the social networking events, putting together our new online packet with Jordan, the director of social media. Uh, I feel so blessed. We have an awesome board and they are all so involved in just coming up with creative ideas and taking ownership and being a leader. So. I give everyone A plus. <laughs> Everyone's doing great. Thank you. Okay, this time we are delighted to have a member with us. Rick Lindsay is here and he has a couple of thoughts and an introduction and we're going to make a presentation. Thank you, Rick. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you, President Linda. It is my pleasure today to be back with you and celebrate uh, Rotary. Um, vocational service, one of the five avenues of Rotary, uh, is what we're going to honor and celebrate today. And I have the privilege of working on that avenue of service with our club, um, with our chairperson, Chris Dobson. Um, I don't know if Chris is there. I talked to her earlier in the week. She was kind of under the weather. So Chris, if you're there, I hope you uh, are feeling better. She is online, good. So uh, this award presentation is a recognition of a vocational service. It's tar we started this program uh, three years ago, so this is the fourth year. And it is an honor for this club to recognize the policeman or officer of the quarter. So at this time, I would like to invite our own Irving Police Chief, uh, Jeff Spivey to join me. Also our Mayor Pro Tem, Kyle Taylor and City Councilman Oscar Ward to join me up there. Please welcome these gentlemen to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. It's, it's really an honor to be here again. The Rotary Club has meant so much to the Irving Police Department and, and your willingness to recognize the hard work of the men and women of the Irving Police Department, I think demonstrates the commitment the club has to the, the community, demonstrates the commitment and lives out the values uh, that we talk about day in and day out. That's truly demonstrated by your willingness to you know, reach out and, and love on and honor the men and women of the Irving Police Department. I couldn't be more proud uh, to stand before you today. I, I come before you today, incredibly proud of the officer that we're recognizing uh, today, Officer Travis Reyes. Travis, if you would join me up here, please. Officer Travis Reyes was, Officer Travis Reyes was selected as Officer of the Quarter for the second quarter of 2021. Officer Travis Reyes has been a leader within the patrol division for the last several shifts, both from a productivity standpoint, but more importantly, from a mentoring standpoint. Uh, during this quarter, Officer Reyes produced a number of quality arrests and investigations, uh, making 22 on-view arrests, 16 of which were felony-level offenses. Uh, the result Results of uh, the arrests have resulted in narcotics and firearm seizures, all of which were seized from defendants with violent histories. Officer Reyes has been a mentor to several young officers on the shifts and has facilitated newer officers riding with him over the course of the last year to help them improve their patrol skills and investigations. Officer Reyes' positivity combined with his work ethic was an example for all of our police officers uh, but specifically those who he interacted with day in and day out. And, you know, I, I received Officer Reyes's permission uh, to share this, this part with you because when, when you read this, you think, well, that's great. That's what we expect of all of our police officers. But what stands out to me in, in understanding the story behind Officer Reyes is Officer Reyes had a couple of bumps in the road uh, a year or so ago. I guess it's been longer than that. And, and I say bumps in the road. And he had a couple of accidents in his squad car that caused him to lose his driving privileges. And, and we do that to protect the officer uh, so that they don't run afoul of, of city policies and lose their ability to have their job. And so, you know, taking his driving privileges away, as you might can imagine, can tend to bruise a police officer's ego. And, and what we see a lot of times is when this happens to a police officer, uh, their attitude isn't as positive as we would like to see. What stood out with me and what stood out with Officer Reyes's supervisors who put him in for this award is he embraced this opportunity. He took advantage of, of not being able to drive and have younger officers come chauffeur him around and he poured into these younger officers the skills, the investigative techniques, the crime fighting techniques 
the abilities and instincts that he had learned over the years. We stole officer Reyes from the Dallas Police Department a number of years ago. So it's, he's, he's a newer officer for us, but he's not a newer police officer. And so he was able to use all of that experience, all of that training, and his ability to connect with, with police officers who are younger, less experienced than he was, and pour into them and really help them grow. And he's been a great mentor. He's been a great police officer. And for this, he was recognized as officer of the second quarter. Congratulations. So I have the same trouble, Rick, as, as you do. You have that written out? Yes, sir. <laughs> you want to read it or you want me to? Uh, why don't you read okay. it this time, Chief? You know, my 54-year-old eyes just don't work like they should. Officer Travis Reyes, for your commitment to integrity, excellence, courage, dedication to duty, leadership, teamwork, and accountability, we express our sincere gratitude for your professionalism, compassion and loyalty in providing exceptional services and protecting and promoting a high quality of life for residents, visitors, and businesses of the city of Irving, Texas, April through June 20 of 2021. Congratulations. Oh, no. If y'all would just uh, be patient with me for a second. Officer Reyes's uh, parents are here from California. They just happen to be in town. Uh, so if we could, y'all can be patient. <laughs> Did you want to say a few words? Uh, just thank you guys uh, for this. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you to my parents for instilling perseverance and grit. I appreciate it. Right. Yes, uh, congratulations from the, uh, the mayor and city council. We uh, appreciate our uh, police department. Uh, I have a little bit in common what I learned from you. You came from Dallas PD, and uh, we have something in common. My, my son graduated from Nimitz many years ago, and, but anyway, he went and started his, most, or his police career at Dallas PD, then uh, became an ATF, special agent for ATF. So we got some good training from there going forward. But I'd like to uh, remind you, if you don't know already, this April, excuse me, October the 5th, the first Tuesday in October is National Night Out. And that's a chance to see the police officers come out and the first responders, the fire department. So there's different uh, uh, HOAs, different neighborhood associations, uh, I, I live in Cardinal Village Neighborhood Association. We'll have a big fish fry. So come on out, <laughs> Officer Reyes, and visit us in the Chief. So it's a, it's a great opportunity to meet your neighbors. And in and, uh, and Cardinal Village, what we do to get the neighbors to come out, we give away one roll of blue bag recycling. So it's amazing what, how that brings the neighborhoods out to get a roll of blue bags. So anyway, congratulations to you. We're really proud of you. Good job. Thank you. Um, I just want to say congratulations. Um, it's really neat to live in the community of Irving because as Oscar and I can tell you, when we're out, people will come up to us and all they do is praise our police force. The last six officers that I've had run-ins with, they're good run-ins, not negative run-ins, <laughs> have all been from out of state and all they wanted to do was come to Irving because they have heard of the programs and the way our police department runs and operates, whether it's coffee with a cop, barbershop, beauty shop, the way the progressive thing, and the way the community reacts with our police department. So on behalf, like I said, also on behalf of the mayor and city council, it's a privilege to work with this police force. 
it's an honor to work with y'all and to serve with y'all and call us friends and neighbors. So thanks a lot. Congratulations on your work. Thank you. 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 Th
And so they were all just wanting to start over. Um, and so that invest in yourself through that program, we were able to get them. Now they're able through the credit working, learning their financial capabilities to get their own car, to be able to sign their own lease with their apartment. We've placed both of them in Irving Company. So now they're work, making above a uh, minimum wage. So they're actually making a living wage out of poverty now as they raise their two kids. So that the goal with investing yourself every year is to lift 50 families out of poverty. It's a kind of a different way to look at how you do services. It's not transactional. It may take a little bit longer, but it's an actually a better way to get families to, um, to um, self-sufficiency. Our, our Irving Independent School District Partnership, we started this this year. Um, we're working with Magda and her team. We have created a referral system by which anytime a counselor, vice principal, principal, nurse, sees somebody in the school that's struggling, um, they can immediately refer to Irving Cares. We will contact that family within 48 hours to start the process of helping to, to keep them to eliminate whatever their issues are. Um, there's other agencies that have done this. The idea is to make the, let the kids stay in that school where they're at so we don't have kids who have to leave the school or parents get evicted and are constantly people in those kids' lives. Um, several agencies that we walked, worked through with doing this, the idea of doing this, um, last year one agency kept over 200 families from being evicted. The, behind that is my mother worked in the independent school district for over 30 years, um, both as a teacher and as a counselor. And so listening to her stories about finding places to go with the kids, who to talk to, where to go, the staff and I sat down and said, this is something that we want to create and want to do. We know there's other agencies around that do the same thing. So this allows us to put us inside of that fold to be able to do that. And like I said, the idea is to provide stability and to get help to those families before they fall off the cliff. So how you can get involved with Irving Cares. Um, of course, on our Facebook page, we have a newsletter that goes out, the irvingcares.org. Um, if you're looking to volunteer in our food pantry or as a case manager or any other roles that we have, um, you can just contact me at ktaylor at irvingcares.org. Um, you can donate to us, whether it's physical goods or cash, because today is North Texas Giving Day. So if you have not donated yet, there's a number of great agencies in the city of Irving doing a lot of good work. Um, and so if you can go to North Texas Food Bank and donate a little bit, every little bit helps. People tell me $5 doesn't make a difference. You would be surprised what an agency can do with $5 um, to help take care of a family. And then, of course, the number of events that we do. And we just added Terry Oliver to our staff, and she is planning a number of events um, to try to get um, folks involved with us to understand what we do and to have a chance to give back to their community. Next slide, please. So the upcoming events we have, October 1st is our golf tournament. We had to move our golf tournament from earlier in the year because the golf course wasn't ready yet because of the freeze. So now October, I would call it our CARES Cup. And that's going to be October 1st. October 28th, Bingo Bash Monster Mash at the Texaco. So I have the luxury of having board members that have very unique ideas. And this Bingo Bash is a kind of a Halloween costume idea where we play what's called Singo Bingo. The lady I went to high school with, MacArthur High School, calls Bingo. She's kind of an MC of the games, and it's based upon music. So you'll have songs from the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. It's not the same as doing regular B5. It could be a song by ABBA, and you watch everybody start singing it. And it's kind of a nice way to do that. And then there's a number of us that have been talking. I have a group of about 25 of us that have been talking. And we are going to try this year on December 31st to hold the very first New Year's Eve party at the Urban Convention Center benefiting Urban Cares. Um, so this is a kind of a test, We're kind of throwing this out there to see, to give folks a chance. So Ricky Derrick is gonna be our opening act from eight to 10. Many of you know him from his Frank Sinatra days and things he's done here within the city. So these are some of the events in which we are trying to raise program money, um, introduce new folks to Urban Cares and just let folks have a good time in the city. Next one. Question. So I'll talk about the gala a little bit. Um, we talked, we had our gala on Friday. Over 300 people um, came to our gala. It was amazing to see people be able to just get out. We tried to social distance everything, but it was amazing how the mob just kind of went 
um, together. We we gave masks away. We did everything we could to to um, do that. We raised a little over two hundred twenty thousand um, dollars, which is good for us. It was a little bit smaller than we normally have. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm extremely proud of this city because I've been to a number of these as a guest and everything. It amazes me that when you ask this city and these residents in this city to give back, to help their neighbors, how they constantly show up to give back. For all of you that have done that for different organizations, I just really want to take some time to thank you for really caring about your neighbors and giving back, whether it's Urban Cares, Crisis Ministries, Salvation Army, uh, Humane Society, Healthcare Foundation, Schools Foundation. There's a lot of great agencies doing a lot of work. And it's, it's really an honor and privilege to be doing this work for this city and realizing that you really do care about your neighbors and you really do give back. This club has given a ton of money out to different organizations. I just want to say as a resident and as an elected official and as a CEO of a nonprofit, I just want to thank you for how big y'all's hearts is and how much you will open your wallets for us. So thank you for that. Any questions for me about anything? Yes, ma'am. Okay. With, we donated to uh, North Texas Food Pantry. Mm -hmm. How do we know that that money will benefit? So, when you donate to North Texas Food Bank, um, you can you can tell them you want it to, but when really when it goes to North Texas Food Bank, you're not for you, you can't guarantee it's going to stay in the city. If you're going to donate to one of the local food banks here in Irving, it's better if you donate it to John's at Crisis Ministries or Kyle Taylor at Irving Cares because that way it stays in the city. If you, you know, when you take your cans to the state fair coming up and you put your cans in there, there's no guarantee those cans are going to come back to Irving and not go to Greenville. And that's just, so, that's just the way they do. Now, North Texas Giving Day, you can actually go and declare which agency or what you want to go to the Irving Symphony, you want to go to arts, whatever, you can earmark where you want your dollars to go. Yeah. You know, they kept sending the emails and everything, and it got pretty confusing. Yeah. Well. They're, they're a good organization, but don't you all, how do you coordinate? With so, we have a relationship with North Texas Food Bank in which we're able to um, procure food products and other items to give out to the community. They do a lot of work with USDA you know, and um, Hunger for America. Um, and Feeding America, in which they're a huge, they have a lot more, they have a stronger ability to procure product than somebody like I do, somebody like us or Crisis Ministry. So we benefit from their ability to leverage their size and their capacity to be able to benefit from that for the city of Irving. It's a great, they're a good organization. It's a great relationship. It's really interesting because I was at a meeting with a bunch of elected officials up there at North Texas Food Bank, and they're even starting to look at this idea of well, giving people pineapples every day is never going to get anybody out of poverty. It's the idea of using a bundled approach. It's the idea of education and employment are the only really two ways in which you're going to get folks out of poverty. Um, and so they're starting to kind of work with, they're starting to kind of see that. And when I had a conversation with Trish Cunningham, who's the CEO there, they're even starting to look and see and move that way that, you know, we can, you know, counting 750,000 meals that's great for a Monday, but what's it really do for the family on Tuesday? And there's starting to be this really nice shift on a much more holistic approach. And you've got a number of agencies that have started to do that and move that direction. Any other questions for me? Yes, sir. Hi, I've heard you say many times the number of people that you've helped with rental assistance. Mm -hmm. What is the average rental assistance? Our average market, so we, we pay fair market value, which means we pay an average of what the rent is in the city based upon the size of that apartment. We pay $1,134 a, a month for somebody's rental assistance. Now, some rental assistance may be $800, $900. We've had some rental assistance checks as high as $1,700, $1,900. What we have learned is we used to cap everything at $750, but if somebody comes to you in crisis and you're only going to pay $750, they have to figure out how to make that difference up. So that is when we shifted to fair market value um, to be able to pay their rents. Also through a lot of your federal dollars now, they're asking and requesting that you do fair market value um, to be able to really lift that family for that amount of time 
um, out of the out of to give them that relief. The other thing that we do is when we do that is we sit down and have one on one conversations with everybody that we write a check to everybody that we see. And we really want to try to dig in and find out what the roadblocks are, what their challenges are to being self-sufficient. You know, why are you coming to my food pantry? You know, what are your challenges? What do you do? And that goes back to that holistic bundled approach where everybody is different. There's no cookie cutter way to eliminate poverty or, you know, as long as we've been fighting the war on poverty, we should have had it done by now. But that's how that works on that fair market value. Yeah. Any other questions for me? Yes, ma'am. You know, I've noticed when I'm using the charge card now, it says you want to cover the fee. Yeah. Yeah. You want to donate some. The difference. Right. Round, Round up. Round up. Mm -hmm. Do you get any of that? It just depends on where that when you're in that retail person, what they're rounding to. It could be to you know you go to Petco, and a lot of that roundup goes to. Humane Society. It just really depends on what that charity of choices for that retail partner that they've signed up with. If you have some of those and you publicize them, we'll know. Yeah. Okay. We, if, we, if we ever get to the point where we can do that, we do that, then yes, we will let everybody know. Um, we have somebody has donated a huge change machine to us that we've got some retail people that we're going to have allowed us to be able to sit in there for 30 days. So when you, of course, using cash is a whole different deal. And you can drop your change in there. We can pick the change up as we come back by. Los Clintus Medical Center has done a piggy bank for us for almost 10 years. And the piggy bank has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. So when they go through the lines, people drop their change and we pick their change up. Yeah, it's a pretty unique way to, you know, you're always looking to find different ways to entice somebody to give um, and um, to give and to just remember to remind them to give because we're all really busy and it's important work that we do. And you'll hear a lot today from every email you get from my North Texas debate. We can't do this work without your dollars and dollars make the world go around in the nonprofit world. So any other questions? All right, again, I just really thank you all for your support of Irving Cares. And I appreciate you letting me come back in the door since I've been gone for so long. And it's just an honor to be a member of this club. And thank you all. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate you updating us on how we can partner up with Urban Care and make a difference with individuals and families that are in need. At this time, we're going to uh, look at uh, the flag program. Uh, does anyone have an update regarding the flag program? Kathy or Dr. Labar? Or Richard, any updates? Probably. We will have a sports day at the uh, new facility towards the middle of October. Uh, we've got some flags that we need to rebuild. We've also got a bunch of flags that were extra that uh, are in bundles that have, are a little worse for wear. And we need to do some organizing and some cleaning and, and that kind of stuff in the new facility. That'll be coming in about three or four weeks. Uh, not right now. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and yes, we'll do ports and labels. So if you're uh, chief of police officer, this would be my job. Uh-oh. Chief of police Lots of room. Lots. Lots. <laughs> 
will lie. Yeah. So we have lots of work to do. We have bought uh, some uh, plastic packages so we can actually set up an assembly line uh, inside the facility. Uh, will be much more organized. And, and the also thing is, uh, Rick bought a couple of fire signatures. I bought a safety kit, or the club has bought safety kit and goggles so that we can um, uh, do this to the manner of professionalism and safety, not being tripping over each other. And, uh, so we're, you know, we're taking a step up and, and uh, getting professional. <laughs> He's going to engineer a uh, way of securing the bags. We will probably uh, purchase another rack. He knows that we're full right now. And I know um, I have a president of over 2,000 or some numbers. So we're going to be yes. we've got ways to grow. And uh, so, again, my compliments to Kathy Howard. And Rosa Thornton will get them in here. We'll have a, a pizza party for all of our delivery team. I bet you're working on that, Kathy. Excellent. The Reverend Beth. So now we've got a lot of things going on. So uh, you've got an opportunity to continue to be a part of our flag program and this 69 279 outstanding job Rotary Club for this year's flag. Thank you, everyone. That was the scouts that delivered the delivery teams praised, praised the new space. They did run out of uh, uh, zip ties, but that's okay. They love the new space and they love the location. So all is good. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, that helps and supports the flag program. And we do have a goal of increasing 20%. So it's about telling your neighbors and friends and coworkers about how to make a difference with being patriotic. Also, we're delighted to have the Irving ISD represented here today. Thank you so much. Do you have anything you would like to say? Excellent. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Madeline Argueta and I am the Parent Education and Community Engagement Lead here at Irving ISD. I'm Lisa, I'm Lisa Page, I'm the Parent Engage Engagement and Education and Community Engagement Strategist. It's a, lo it's a long title. So, oh, yeah. so we have expanded our program. So I've been with Parent Engagement for Irving for several years now, but we added this um, summer community engagement. And so we're looking for partnerships and ways that we can bring your resources like Irving Cares. I'm so excited that we're partnering, our district's partnering with you and we also are here to help. And we just wanna bring the resources that you all have and can share with our families. And so I think Madeline has some quick suggestions that she can give you on ways that you can partner with us. Yes, we're looking um, to build more partnerships, more relationships for our families as well, especially after um, such a long period of isolation and suffering for a lot of our families. Um, and we want families to have opportunities to do community service. We need some mentors for our students. Um, a lot of families are suffering, so we are looking to kind of make a seamless process in working with our nonprofits to make sure that they have their needs met. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, please reach out to us. We, we are looking to, to make sure that our students are doing community service and that the families can feel that the community is here to support them. Um, and we do want to learn about the organizations that are providing job training and skills training and language services, because a lot of families, a lot of parents have requested help with computer training and language training. So if that's something that you know about, please reach out to us. We are trying to create a resource page where families can go. We have parent liaisons on each campus um, and we're giving this information to them so that they can directly um, provide a phone number and make sure that they're getting what they need. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you sharing on how we can support and help children, the leaders. Um, next week, the meeting will be here. Oh, Shane, you have something to say? Yes, one more. Uh, Shane is our president elect. Thank you, Madam President. One real quick announcement about uh, Austin's 
Thank you, Shane. Our meeting next week will be here at Oh, let's give a shout out. Our meeting next week will be here at the Country Club at noon on Thursday, the 30th. Our next board meeting will be October the 7th, following the weekly meeting. Four way test will be led by the director of social media, Jordan Alsa. Yes, this is a couple of majors from Sainwood. They had their first kind of entry integrators to be. This is how many kids showed up. Excellent. Let's get rid of the boys. Thank you, everyone, and have an awesome week.